testing. One, two, three, testing. We're good? Yes. Good morning. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Holy God, who comes to us in spirit, visit us this, the Lord's day, and set us aflame with amazement and joy. Open our paths to new visions and guide our feet deeper into your wisdom. In Christ we pray, amen.
Friends, I invite you to join me in the call to worship, which is printed in your bulletin. Come, spirit of wisdom, and teach us to value the highest gifts. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, spirit of understanding, and show us all things in the light of eternity. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, spirit of godliness, and stir up our minds and our hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, come. the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning, friends. Welcome to worship at Bradley Hills Presbyterian Church. We are so glad to be able to worship God together on this Pentecost Sunday, a day that recognizes the gift of the Holy Spirit 
forming the church to which we are heirs and, and bringing forth new gifts for ministry. If you're here for the first time, we're so glad you've chosen to worship at Bradley Hills today. We hope you'll take one of our welcome visitor packets in the Narthex Hall. Maybe we can mark and, and pass the red fellowship pads during the worship service. There are a chance to gather if we want during the week or after worship today with Denise or myself to to share and get to know the church a little bit. We'd love to have a a chance to walk alongside you and your family and and share the gifts of of God at Bradley Hills with you. And for those who are online across the country, welcome. We are, are glad you are here through the gift of technology. You can open up today's bulletin on the website and continue with an offering through the the Give Now icon, and explore the ministries of our church. But whether we are across the country or here, whether we're a first-time visitor or we're here every Sunday, we hope the gift of the Spirit on this particular day is a gift to each and every one of us. So let's take a moment, uh, folks who are here, find someone you didn't come to worship with today and say, welcome to worship. I'm glad you're here. You'll see other announcements in the life of our community today. If you look in the the bulletin, we know today we begin the summer uh, season, and you all have passed the test of successfully getting here at 10 o'clock, so you're off to a good start on on Pentecost. We'll have a single service at 10 here in the sanctuary uh, throughout uh, the summer. And you'll see other announcements in the life of our church. Next week, uh, we'll have communion at this service. And then following worship is the all-church barbecue. So as we gather together following uh, worship at 11 o'clock next week, all are invited. And it's a a fun Sunday. Bring a friend. It will be a a festive gathering on the church grounds outside. And if you'd like to to help, we have a good team now. We're going to help grill and uh, help to to set up as always uh, needed or to, to help with tear down. If you're at all interested in helping us next week, send me an email. You'll also see that if you've ever wanted to be part of one of the most meaningful things that we do as a community are mission trips, particularly for our high schoolers. We need uh, one more chaperone for our high school mission trip uh, to South Carolina at the end of June. And so I I commend that announcement to you in the bulletin. Uh, it is, it is, anyone who's been on a mission trip uh, helping to chaperone our youth, it is very, very meaningful to both uh, the youth but also to those who go along. And so if you've ever wanted to do it, we need someone June 18th to June 23rd. You could see Denise, myself, Matt Nabinger, if you want more information, um, but we commend that announcement to you as well. We'll be talking about both Memorial Day and strategic visioning later in the service. Uh, we know that a uh, community member, not a church member, but community member, Al Flagg's memorial service will be today at noon here in uh, this room. And you'll see other announcements, our, our hymnal opportunity, our vacation Bible school, uh, and other activities like smart sacks uh, in the life of our community and our congregational meeting for nominating committee on the 11th. So friends, the Holy Spirit is with us, calling us together and connecting us with God. Let us now open our hearts fully to receiving the gift of that Spirit. Let us join together in the prayer of adoration and confession, followed by a period of silence for your own personal confessions. Almighty God, You poured your spirit upon gathered disciples, creating a new community of faith. We adore you for your generosity, yet we confess that we hold back the force of your spirit among us. You have sent us the spirit of love, but we have preferred to hate those who oppose us. You have sent us the spirit of peace, but we have allowed your selfishness to cause division. You have sent us the spirit of kindness, 
but we have been indifferent to other people's needs. Teach us how much we need the power of your spirit in our lives, for Jesus Christ's sake. We pray. Amen. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Maybe seat it. Well, good morning, friends. How are you today? Oh, that wasn't a very loud, resounding good. Oh, that's how I like to hear it, full of the Holy Spirit. Let's all say good. Okay, so you know, Easter was about a little over seven weeks ago. Do you remember Easter? Yes. Yes, okay. And then after Easter, Jesus saw his disciples. And the last time that Jesus saw his disciples, he told them to go to Jerusalem to wait for him because he would send them a gift. And so this morning, I want to tell you about that gift. Now, it's not a gift that's in a box, so I don't have a box with a bow on it or anything. It's, it was the gift of the Holy Spirit. So as I said, we're past Easter about seven weeks. And today, as Pastor David said, is, is called Pentecost. Can you say Pentecost? Pentecost? Very good. And Pentecost means 50. So it was 50 days after the Jewish celebration of Passover. And so in our church today, we celebrate Pentecost as it, was, uh, it came during the middle of the Jewish celebration of Pentecost. Now, what is Pentecost? Well, I'll tell you, there's two things I want you to know. First, there was the event of Pentecost with the disciples. And then I'd like for you to know what Pentecost means for us today as the church. So I'm telling you this story. So the disciples, as Jesus said, go to Jerusalem and wait for me. I will send um, a gift for you. So the disciples went to Jerusalem and they waited and they waited. And then, one day, 50 days after the Passover, they were all in a room together, and they began to hear this loud noise. And there was this wind that was just blowing. How does wind blow when you think about, how would wind blow for you? Can you make noise like wind? <sighs> so there was all this wind blowing, and then there was fire. The way the scripture describes it is that there were flames or tongues of fire that came and settled on all of the disciples. 
And it wasn't literal fire like the candle behind us, but that's how they described it so that you would understand that something really special was happening. And that fire, the flame, is represented of the Holy Spirit. So what that meant for us is that Jesus, there's three things. One, that Jesus kept his promise. So Jesus said, I'm going to send you a gift. And so the gift of the Holy Spirit came. And that reminds us that Jesus was faithful, that Jesus kept his promise. So you must remember when you make a promise that you keep your promise, that you're faithful to the promises that you make. Secondly, it also is that um, the Holy Spirit uh, came and that basically... It was the beginning of the church. So we celebrate the birthday of the church. So you see how festive the church looks today. We have all these red decorations. And red is a really powerful color because it reminds you of fire. And it reminds you of excitement. So this is the birthday of the church. That when the Spirit came to the disciples, they all could start speaking in a different language. Something happened, and there was all this noise, and the people who were out celebrating the festival of Passover, they could hear what was going on, and they came to hear. And so one of the disciples, Peter, told all the crowd about Jesus and Jesus' love for, for them and how Jesus would save them and to offer them eternal life. And so... When they heard that, 3,000 people were baptized that day. So that was why we call it the birth of the church. And then lastly, we want you to know that the Holy Spirit, even though you can't see the Holy Spirit, that it is, um, it's this feeling that you have that you know that Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to be with you as a gift. And when we believe in Jesus, then that spirit lives within us. So just like you can't see love, just like you can't see the wind, you can feel the Holy Spirit and know that the Holy Spirit is the presence of God that lives within you. So that spirit helps us to make good decisions. It helps us to be kind to others. The Holy Spirit gives us comfort when things are making us feel sad. And it also helps us to know what the truth is. So as you get older, then you'll know because the spirit lives within you. And, and, and a way to know about that is like, if somebody gives you a present, do you look sad or do you look happy? Or do you feel happy? Yeah, you feel happy. Okay, so what you feel when you receive that present, which is a literal present, just know as you continue to mature, as you continue to get older and understand Jesus and Jesus' love, that you'll be able to feel that spirit within you. So I'd like for you to pray with me right now. Can we all bow our heads? And repeat after me. Dear God, Thank you for loving us. Thank you for sending Jesus to teach us about your love. And thank you for sending the Holy Spirit as our helper. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so I think you go back either to your parents or to class today. I'm not remembering. Class? Parents. All right, so you go back with your parents and go in peace.
Today's scripture lesson is from Acts 2, verses 1 to 6. 皆信仰部会ユダヤ人たちが来て住んでいたが、このものとに大勢の人が集まってきて、彼らの生まれ故郷の国語で人たちが話しているのを誰も彼も聞いて、あっけに取られた。Cuando llegó el día de Pentecostés, Estaban todos unánimes, juntos, y de repente vino del cielo un estruendo como de un viento recio que soplaba, el cual llenó toda la casa donde estaban sentados. Y se les aparecieron lenguas repetidas como de fuego, asentándose sobre cada uno de ellos, y fueron todos llenos del Espíritu Santo, y comenzaron a hablar en otras lenguas según el Espíritu le estaban que hablasen. Moraban entonces en Jerusalén judíos, varones piadosos de todas las naciones bajo el cielo. Y hecho estru estruendo, se juntó la multitud y estaban confusos porque cada uno les oía hablar en su propia lengua.《使徒行传》第二章第一节到第六节说起北国的语言来当时耶路撒龙住的从天下过国回来的虔诚的犹太人众人听到这个响声都赶过来聚集听见门徒在说他们各自的语言都十分的纳闷 Amen Amikor pedig eljött a pünkös napja, mindannyian együtt voltak ugyanazon a helyen. Hirtelen hatalmas szér a homhoz, ha szóló zuggás támadt az égből, amennyire betölte az egész házat, ahol öltek. Majd valami lelknyelvek jelentek meg előttük, melyek szétoszlottak, és leszálltak mindegyikükre. Mindjárt megteltek szent lélekkel, és különféle nyelveket kezdettek beszélni, úgy, ahogyan a lélek adta nekik, hogy szóljanak. Sok kegyes zsidó férfi tartózkodott akkor Jeruzsálemben, azok közül, akik a Föld minden nemzete között éltek. Amikor a zukkás támadt, összefutott ez a szokszág, és nagy zavar keretkezett mert mindenki a maga nyelvén hallotta őket beszélni. Le jour de la Pentecôte, ils étaient tous ensemble dans le même lieu. Tout à coup, il vint du ciel un bruit comme celui d'un vent impétueux, et il remplit toute la maison où ils étaient assis, des langues. Semblables à des langues de feu, leur apparut séparées les unes des autres, 
et se posèrent sur chacun d'eux. Et ils furent tous remplis du Saint-Esprit et se mirent à parler en d'autres langues, selon que l'Esprit leur donnait de s'exprimer. Or, il y avait en ce jour à Jérusalem des Juifs ont pieux de toutes les nations qui sont sous le ciel. Au bruit qui eut lieu, la multitude accourut et elle fut confondue parce que chacun les entendait parler dans sa propre langue. Horioni,韓国人,韓国人,韓国人,韓国人,韓国人,韓国人,韓国人,韓国人,韓国人,韓国人,韓国人,韓国人,韓国人,韓国人,韓国人,韓国人,韓国人,韓国人,韓国人,
what kind of church do we want to build? What kind of community has the best chance of engaging the hearts and minds of future generations? What kind of Bradley Hills is Christ calling us to be? We celebrate first off with gratitude. Gratitude for the strong place we have the fortune of being in, and we have a lot to celebrate. In a time of growing secularization and denominational decline, Bradley Hills has proven remarkably resilient. We're often held up as an example and involved as an advisor in our presbytery. We are, we are grateful to each of you for your engagement and for what God is doing here. Pentecost, as Denise mentioned, is a festival that honors tradition. That word Pentecost, the weeks of weeks, seven days and seven weeks, seven times seven gets 49, so around 50 days after Passover is this this historic festival of sacrifices, first fruits, and the grateful remembrance of God's giving the law to Moses. BJC celebrated Pentecost here on Friday, Shavuot, for example. Our new report celebrates what is going on here. You as a congregation filled out a Presbytery suggested survey and showed overwhelming support for the way things are going. Worship, for example, near the top of the survey in terms of of what you all say we do well. And our presbytery defining us as a, quote, high energy, high satisfaction church. Our congregational feedback remaining supportive of our activities and governance supporting our staff in continuing the vision of having a strong traditional music program, diverse adult education programs, and impactful mission programs. And so our challenge is, how do we maintain the areas where we are strong and build on our strengths to diversify our ministries in ways that engage newer members who come from increasingly diverse backgrounds? Our presbytery has also suggested that you as a congregation are one that has high potential for adaptability. And I would agree with that from my own experience. You are a creative, forgiving, and open-minded group who, who prize forward thinking and respect different views, experiences, modes of connecting and worship and expressing faith. And as our presbytery folks remind us, we are in a new place now as a church, a different one than the last time we did a strategic plan. We have many, many new members since then, and and unlike in 2016, when our charge coming out of our strategic planning was, in many ways, to uphold what we were doing, now coming out of COVID, the world is different. And our task force challenges us to identify the new things God is doing in our midst. In order to grow in the face of societal shifts and demographic changes in the PCUSA, COVID lingering reluctance to return to many of the same patterns as before, and significant transitions in our staff this past year, with Amy, Linda, Joni, Sonny, and Samantha all retiring from ministry within the same 12-month period, Our task force is charging us to ask, what new things is God calling us to do as a church? Our former associate pastor and congregational consultant, John Wimberly, argues that many of the structures and practices of the church that were formed in past decades have to be focused on a bit to to ask, how do we adapt to the new place that society is in? Or as Denise reminds us in our prayer chain, the prophet Isaiah inspires us asking and saying, I'm about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth, do you not perceive it? I make a way in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. Our logo as a church on the front of your bulletin has a cross at the center but many roads to it. And so on a day where we celebrate that we can hear Christ in our own language, we recognize that many experience God in different ways. Some in the silence of prayer, some in listening and singing music, some, some by reading God's word, others by communion, many through mission, many by learning, others through fellowship. Sometimes doing a familiar practice in worship 
in a way that people don't expect you to do isn't all bad. And we cannot just stay where we are. We have to follow the Spirit just as those in the early church did. What Pentecost fundamentally does is celebrate a new thing. The new winds of change blowing by as it has been sung. People filled with the Spirit and inspired to speak in different languages. And Luke tells us that all of them were filled with the Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. And each was able to hear. Unity out of diversity. To be spiritually filled is a gift of the Spirit for the people of God. Luke tells us that a diverse people were people from every location and nation, the text tells us. Every ethnos. BHPC is growing with people of different cultures and backgrounds and locations. Our November new member class, for an example, had four different countries of origin just in that new member class. One of our spring new member classes had six different denominations of origin just in that new member class. Uh, the PCUSA is a broad denomination in terms of music, worship, and fellowship styles. And so our report focuses on the ability to think creatively about approaches, spaces, diversity of generations in all of our work. We as a community have been talking about the doxology in worship for a while, our response to our offertory anthem where we offer sung offering of thanksgiving after making our, our offerings to God. And so we've begun to vary the words in it along with other parts of our service music to celebrate the ways in which different people experience God's grace through that part of worship. We fundamentally celebrate our mutual forbearance and appreciation of how others celebrate God. And the neat thing about Pentecost is that everyone mattered. They were all together in one room from every nation, and the Spirit filled all of the houses and rested on each of them, and they were all filled with the Spirit. Later on in Acts 2, the prophecy of Joel, as Denise mentioned, is given that the Spirit would one day come to all the people. As one commentator put it, the Pentecost point is not just that some people, but all people are God's people. From the least to the greatest, they'll all have the Spirit and be equipped for witness with various gifts. In the Hebrew Bible, it speaks of the Spirit, but at Pentecost, it comes to God's people in a new way. Not just a spirit appearing to a special people for a specific purpose and departing, but here to all the people and remaining, so that each view matters and everyone matters to God. It is said, by the way, that Memorial Day was first known as Decoration Day. Going back to 1865, when thousands of freed slaves decorated a mass grave near Charleston, South Carolina, where hundreds of dead Union soldiers had been buried during the Civil War. To quote David Blight of Yale University, Decoration Day was founded by African Americans in a ritual of remembrance and consecration. The war they had boldly announced had been a triumph of freedom. The greatest contribution to American history of that conflict was the affirmation that all people are created equal and deserve equal rights. Last Sunday, several of us gathered at the Josiah Henson Museum on Old Georgetown Road after worship. Henson lived a remarkable life, among other things, as a 19th century author and minister and abolitionist. He was a slave in Montgomery County and lived, among other places, in what is now North Bethesda. And there is a video that they show at the beginning of the tour of the Henson Museum where they talk about how Josiah Henson grew up and, and heard a preacher once proclaim that Jesus died for everyone equally, for him too. And that idea, that radical idea at the time, helped inspire him to his life's work. And the phrase that they repeat in that video that he 
took to heart was by understanding through Christ's sacrifice that God was for everyone, and everyone's views mattered. Friends, this is Pentecost theology, that Jesus is a gift of God given for all, that he dies for us all equally, and that God is for everyone. That is Pentecost theology, that all voices are heard at Pentecost, and that all had a place to participate. The PCUSA, as we've mentioned before, is fundamentally a participation denomination. And so our strategic visioning task force asks, how do we get people engaged in the ministry of the church in this new time? Well, our deacons are doing it. As Denise mentioned recently in a worship sermon, some of our communion teams have begun to serve communion to everyone in our building. Church school teachers, nursery workers, sextons, radical inclusion and participation. For those who are worshiping online, our deacons are seeking to provide hymnals to folks at home, radical inclusion. At coffee hour, organized by name so everyone is included, there is broad engagement. We are looking to expand our participation on our communion team's radical inclusion. And like those at Pentecost, if the story is read further, who thought that folks were speaking because they'd been drinking too much wine, I myself was, must admit I was skeptical of some of our efforts. Too much work, not enough time, people won't be interested. Boy, was I wrong. People respond to radical inclusion. You are a creative bunch who want to energize your faith. And so how do our ministries support broad participation? Now is our chance to engage in that question. Professor John Stott writes of Pentecost, it was the final act of the saving ministry of Jesus before his second coming. He who was born into our humanity, lived our life, died for our sins, rose from the dead and ascended into heaven, now sends his spirit to constitute the people to work out in them what he had won. And so, for Christ's sake, we are called to move into the future. To invest in worship opportunities for children and youth, to include them in music and liturgy inspired by the same spirit that came in a new way so long ago. Acts 2 begins with the idea, the sentence, when Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Well, we are back, but our normal is not the same way as it was. Some of us are in this room and some of us are on the live stream. We, we aren't going back to the time when everyone is probably all together, literally in one place. We have members who watch each week from California to, to Europe, from Minneapolis to Orlando, and so our digital ministry matters, and we must continue to expand it. As the church in America and Europe declines numerically, it is achieving record growth in Latin America, Asia, and Africa, making the American church quickly more diverse. So we are charged in our time to follow that same spirit into the modern-day Pentecost at BHPC. And I think we are well prepared to do it. As some of you know, Rabbi Harold Kushner and Pastor Tim Keller each died over the past month. Kushner's books, When Bad Things Happen to Good People, and When All You've Ever Wanted Isn't Enough, and and Keller's Reason for God and Prodigal God are four of the books that I come back to frequently in my ministry, and, and I know I've given copies of some of them to different ones of you. When Kushner died in late April and Keller passed away last week, different ones of you emailed me reflecting on what each individual had meant to you. We have the kind of congregation where the writings of a liberal Jewish rabbi and those of an evangelical Christian pastor resonate deeply with parts of our broad community. And so, friends, our future is exciting. 
One commentator writes of Acts 2 that God did something at Pentecost that defied rational explanation. And the only appropriate response was praise and adoration. Luke 2 concludes, as Denise mentioned, with the note that people dreamed dreams and 3,000 folks joined the church. Well, I'm not predicting that kind of growth in our time, but I do think that we can dream dreams together as our task force has inspired us to. I do think that we can grasp the mysteries of our moment. I do think that we can respond to the challenge of the Pentecost spirit with praise and adoration too. And so let us celebrate. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth, worship the Lord with gladness. Let us celebrate our journey that got us here. Let us celebrate where we are and our many strengths. Let us celebrate how the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, is stirring us, freeing us, and calling us to head into our future. And because of God's miracle at Pentecost, let us celebrate with confidence where we are headed. May it be so. Amen.
Please be seated. This Memorial Day weekend, as we remember those who served and died for the sake of something greater than themselves, we remember in this sacred hour and give thanks for the men and women who put themselves in harm's way so that others might be safer. We remember their families who grieve and and we remember those this day whom we miss in our families, our congregation, our country, who we revere. Let's take a moment to open our hearts to the Spirit in silence now. Gracious God, in whose hands are the living and the dead, we give you thanks for those who lay down their lives in service of our country. And we ask that your spirit of strength, but also of peace and understanding, might be real in our time. In Christ we pray. Amen. Friends, because God first loved us, we are made to love one another. For the sake of the world that God loves, let us share now the gifts of this day.
please be seated. So as we celebrate the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit, it reminds us that um, the Holy Spirit is with us in our joys, um, our celebrations, as well as our cares and concerns. So this is an opportunity for us to lift up aloud or to in your heart uh, in silence. But for those of you who would like to lift up any joys or concerns uh, aloud, this would be a time to do so. And I invite you to do so. We'll say Buen Camino and um, uh, Lord, uh, in your mercy, hear our prayers. So for a successful surgery and prayers for recovery, so with thanksgiving, we praise the Lord. And Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. So praises for graduations upcoming. So with thanksgiving, we praise the Lord. Um, I just would like to share last night, uh, I got a call from my niece and my brother who is um, in Conyers near Atlanta, Georgia, uh, fainted. He, he was unconscious for just a, a short time, but there was a concern and so they did take him to the hospital. Uh, he was complaining of chest pains um, and kept him overnight. So um, we pray that, um, that this was just um, a mild incident, whatever it was, and so I asked for the prayers of the congregation for Daryl. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. So on this Pentecost Sunday, we are grateful for the gift of prayer, knowing that when we don't know the words to utter, the Holy Spirit prays for us. Let us pray. Gracious God, we call you by many names, God, Allah, Jehovah, Elohim, and you hear us in all of those names, just as you hear us in all languages. We give you thanks and we praise your holy name. Our hearts are gladdened by the reminder of Pentecost that Jesus kept his promise to send the Holy Spirit to guide, to comfort, to be our advocate and our helper. Lord, keep us ever mindful. God of hope, we pray for those who are suffering with difficult decisions, for those who must face necessary surgery, terminal illness, or both, those who are addicted to drugs or drink, those who live in hunger and poverty, those who are in the armed forces, not just in our country, but around the world, who are charged with dangerous duties those coming through the waters of grief and loss, those whose lives have been crushed through natural disaster or accident, through violence or war or loss of health and strength, those anxious about the future, and those whose spirits are dimmed by fear. Give to each Kind God, comfort and courage and peace in their hearts and bring inward freedom in the midst of all circumstances that would keep any of them captive. We pray for the leaders of all nations and all peoples. The peace and justice of the world depends on the right actions of these leaders. So we pray that they may not betray their stewardship and not mistake the nature of their obligations. Gracious God, we pray for your church. We know that this is your mission and we are out of gratitude. Just um, support this mission. 
So strengthen this congregation in its work and worship that we may give graciously to places of human need. Speak your praise and conform to your image. Fill us with vision and vigor, with hope and healing energy, and with commitment and caring action, that we may challenge those things that need changing as we remain reformed and always reforming. Empower us to not only say what we believe, but to live what we profess, so that people everywhere, Lord, will come to know your great love for them and enable us to know and to celebrate that same love in our own lives in the days and weeks ahead. In all things for which we have prayed, O oh God, give us the will and the strength to bring them about for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Redeemer, who taught us to dot his disciples and us to say when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. trying to do a benediction by doing like a word from all the different languages, but foreign languages aren't necessarily my strong suit. So friends, just let me say, go forth into this day to celebrate. And as you do, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be your gift this day and always. And together may the people of God say, Amen. Amen.
Let us share with each other a sign of peace. May the peace of Christ be with you. Go in peace. Peace be with you, Jack. Peace be with you.